This is the story of Jalen Morris, age 24, a young lady and a mother who survive an attempt to end her life by her ex-boyfriend Justin Lamar Combs win, during a murder-murder attempt. Justin tried to end her life then end his own, soon after shooting her multiple times but things didn't go the way he planned. Thinking she is dead after shooting her multiple times, he fatally shot himself ending his own life but as things would have it, Jalen survived the ordeal making him the only one who ended up dying. Jalen, age 24, is a shy, sweet, kind, and compassionate kid, but as it's often the case, she attracts the wrong guys because of these qualities. She's the kind of girl who always gives too much of herself to others and is always the first one to help them. Jalen is always giving, and that attracts needy men or guys with personal difficulties and mental issues. Jalen was convinced that if she tried, she could help them and maybe even fix them. But that turned out to be her biggest mistake. She met Justin Lamar Combs Wynn, aged 29, and the two started dating. He had a job at a Walmart store in Ellenwood, Georgia, and his favorite things to do were hugging, playing cards, computer games, and eating delicious cuisine. These were all things that Justin looked forward to doing with his loved ones. Justin also had a soft spot for his dog, Bam Bam. Seems like a very nice and sweet guy, right? But the truth was far from it. At the beginning of their dating, things went smoothly, and the two started to understand each other. There was an obvious loving bond between the couple. But with that, there were also signs of danger. Their relationship lasted approximately 18 months, and during that time Justin was very controlling, to the point where Jalen's parents started to be suspicious of the guy. But Jalen remained confident that she could change him, and Justin would eventually mature and improve. But her family knew something wasn't right about the guy from the moment they first saw him. The family disliked Justin to the point that they would not even let him into their house at times. Jalen, however, was an adult, she was 24 years old, so all they could do was offer their advice and trust that she would eventually come to see that her relationship was harmful. Justin was a total control freak and often got upset when Jalen talked to people, including her childhood best friend and even her sister. Whenever she went out, he demanded to know where she was and questioned her motives for doing so. Even her position as a leader was a source of contention between them. He would purposefully lower her self-esteem to the point where she could only find comfort in him. She would start to doubt her own value after talking to him. Things only got worse from here. When Jalen learned she was expecting a child in October 2022, she was ecstatic. But Justin did not show any signs of excitement, even after finding out the baby was a boy. Jalen's actions were becoming increasingly concerning, but she was told that he would change once the baby was born and that he should be given the opportunity to be a father. Sadly, the father never cared about the kid. Morris recalled that when July came around and Josiah was born, Justin was more interested in Jalen than the kid, and not in a good way. He constantly asked about her whereabouts, what she was doing, and what she was wearing. Jalen would send baby pictures, but he never responded to them. By now, Jalen started to realize the dangers, and she would often block him, but Justin would always find ways to get through, whether it was by using Instagram or Facebook Messenger to get in touch with her directly, calling her from a blocked number, or having others do it for him. Jalen was starting to get worried about not only her safety but her family's as well. She often said it'd rather be her than one of her family members because she's afraid he might hurt one of them. And she wasn't wrong. Even though Jalen had reported Justin to the police for blowing up her phone a week before the incident, they did nothing because he hadn't actually done anything to provoke the incident. In just one hour, Jalen received 50 missed calls, and Justin was constantly stalking her. According to the family, he would send typical abuser-type messages, saying, I love you, and sorry. One day, it worked, and Jalen fell for the bait. Before August 25th, Jalen tried breaking up with Justin, but he went to her workplace to talk to her. He pushed her at work, and that is only one example of physical abuse in their relationship. But still, when she heard that Justin wanted to meet his son and formally end things so they could start co-parenting on good terms, Jalen didn't skip a breath and drove over first thing in the morning of August 25th. Justin claimed that he'd change, and ignoring her intuition and her parents' warnings, Jalen insisted that she had no choice if she didn't want to deal with him constantly bombarding her phone all day. She took her son to see his father, and her parents waited for her call or a text. But the text they received wasn't what they wanted to read. Jennifer, Jalen's mom, received a text from an unknown number saying, I've been shot, mom, I love you, 
and another asking, please help me. At first, the family believed the text was mistakenly sent to them by the wrong number. The thought that it might be Jalen never occurred to them, the text was followed by a FaceTime video of a bloody body lying on the ground, but the family didn't realize it was their Jalen on the floor until she called, and they heard the cries of their grandson. When the parents realized the bloody body they saw was their daughter, their world came crumbling down, and they drove to the location immediately. When they got there, they learned that Justin had committed and that Jalen had been taken away in an ambulance. Luckily, their grandson was safe. The family braced themselves for the news, thinking they had lost their daughter. But luckily, the doctors assured them that Jalen was still alive but needed to be sent to a major trauma center. She was drenched in blood and had two bullet holes in her face. Jalen was put on a ventilator because her airway had failed. She went through three separate surgeries on her jaw, including a cadaver bone graft. She had too many fractures to count in her face, and the doctors believed she would never walk again. Seeing their daughter in a wheelchair was emotionally devastating for the parents. Jalen was in terrible condition, to the point where she had to use a whiteboard to communicate because of damage to her voice cords. She said that Justin had lured her into the bedroom and then started being abusive. She also revealed that he said, you shouldn't have come today, now we are both going to die. In an attempt to save her baby, Jalen grabbed the infant and ran for the door, which she opened partially before he shot her in the back and collapsed. After that, he fired two shots into her face, but she still managed to open the door some more. Despite their terrible nature, murder suicides are surprisingly common, with approximately 1,200 Americans losing their lives in such occurrences annually, as documented by the Nonprofit Violence Policy Center. She doesn't trust pretty much anybody except my husband, myself, her siblings. New at five for the first time since an attempted murder mother shares her daughter's survival story. It happened in August at a Morrow apartment. The shooter was once in a relationship with Jalen Morris and they share a child together. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight for Fox 5 News at 5. I'm Tom Haynes. I'm Courtney Bryant. As Fox 5's Alex Whitler explains, Jalen managed to protect the baby as the shooter hit her three times, then turned the gun on himself. Alex, you spoke with Jalen and her family. How are they doing now? Well, if you were to ask the family, they'd tell you they're doing the best they can. It's been about six weeks since the violence that forever changed 24-year-old Jalen Morris's life. She's now paralyzed from the waist down and in physical therapy at the Shepherd Center. Her mother says she was just getting the hang of motherhood when her child's father snapped. New motherhood is challenging enough. Trying to co-parent can further complicate things. She had started recording on my cell phone when he'd be screaming at her. Besides those signs, family says Jalen Morris's ex-boyfriend pushed her once before. Her father stepped in to set some boundaries, but that violence escalated a final time one August morning when she went to let their newborn spend time with his father. And my husband told her it's not a good idea. I wouldn't go. Like you shouldn't be meeting on his terms. And he had sent her a message, a text message, that basically had said, um, you know, let's end things amicably for the sake of the baby. At a Morrow apartment complex, Jalen's ex-boyfriend shot her three times from close range, twice in the face, once in the back. And then she watched him shoot himself. She army crawled out the front door. The baby was unharmed, shielded by his mother. Neighbors heard Jalen screams. She was conscious enough to give her mother's number as they called authorities. That's how I found out was a FaceTime video where I, re I didn't recognize my daughter and a text message from an unknown number. Doctors say it's not likely Jalen will ever walk again. Family takes care of her son and rebuilds to accommodate her wheelchair as Jalen recovers. Known for her quiet demeanor but big heart, family worries Jalen will be more guarded than ever now that she's survived an attempted murder. It's hard because he did take his own and I wish I could say that I'm happy about that. I mean, I'm happy that she'll never have to deal with him again. The only person that's paying a consequence is our daughter. We believe that Jalen's experience serves as an inspiration to others to end an unhappy and abusive relationship. Don't try to save them, that's not your responsibility. A single red flag is more than enough to warrant concern. It's not safe to ignore the issue and hope it goes away. The Gun Violence Archive reports that the number of gun-related murders and peaked in 2022. 
the number increased to 670, up from 594 in 2021 and 570 in 2020. Jalen may have to stay a long time in the hospital, but with her family by her side, she will make it out. We deeply regret that this unfortunate incident happened in the first place and hope nothing like this happens again. May Jalen Morris find the strength to move past this incident and live her life to the fullest.